John Newbegin, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. I really appreciate it. Now, the Art Basel report's predictions seem quite optimistic. I wonder how surprising uh, reading the report was for you. Well, strangely enough, it's not that surprising. And I think it's not that surprising for two reasons. One is, when times are uncertain, the art market is quite a safe place to put your money. So if you have money, people tend to buy art. So although the global economy is looking not very happy at the moment, putting money into art is a good thing to do. But the second reason, the more important reason, is that the art market, like the market for culture generally, is growing all around the world, particularly in Asia. This new wealthy middle class that's coming up in Asia, they're passionately interested in art and they're buying a lot. So what was really a European and American market 50 years ago is now absolutely a global market and it's growing very fast all the time. So I was not deeply surprised. Can you please talk us through the mentality behind um, investing in art when, you know, uh, when we're going through uncertain times? I mean, how does, how does a piece of art become more sustainable investment than others? I mean, like, you know, classic investments. Well, there's always a slightly speculative element to it because artists become more or less popular. But because the market is growing and because interest in art is increasing, and I think as education levels go up around the world, more people, more people get, are engaged by art. If you went to the Louvre Museum in Paris 50 years ago, there would be 10 people looking at the picture of the Mona Lisa. If you go to the Louvre Gallery now, you queue for one hour to see the Mona Lisa because there is a huge interest in visual art. And so people see art as a good investment, and if they're buying wisely, they know or they can be pretty sure that their investment will increase in value. So, uh, well, thinking, of course, that the world is going through, I mean, experiencing a crisis upon another crisis right now, are you expecting the art market to, um, you know, uh, perhaps make even more money in the upcoming years? I'm just saying this because you said that during uncertain volatile times, art becomes more of a good investment. Well, I think there's two things going on here. One is, I think the art market is increasing, partly because the people who want to buy art and the people who can afford to buy art are increasing in number. But there's a more general thing going on, which is that interest in culture and interest in cultural industries and creative industries is growing around the world. The amounts of money being invested in film and television worldwide are at record levels. The amounts of money being invested in games industry is record levels worldwide. And here in Turkey, there's a very, very powerful game sector and it's increasing in value all the time. And of course, during the pandemic, while some areas of the arts did suffer terribly, theater, live performance, museums and galleries had to be closed, but the games industry, every day was a holiday for them. They were making money like they'd never made before because more people were paying games. So I think that it's not just the art market, but the market for culture, the market for cultural goods and services is increasing all around the world. And it's going to go on increasing and it's becoming a more significant part of our economies, virtually every economy in the world. So overall, do you think the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic was a positive or a negative one? Or, I mean, I know, I know it's a hard one for you, but... Well, I think, of course, there were far more downsides than upsides because the consequences of the pandemic in terms of people's livings and livelihoods, apart from the huge number of people that died, but the cultural sector was very, very badly hit because, as I was saying, every theatre, cinema, museum, gallery had to close for a long period of time and people were thrown out of work. I think the benefit, if you can call it a benefit, is that it's made us much more aware of how important culture is in our lives. When the financial and economic world came to a stop, it was the cultural world that kept people going, that kept people feeling optimistic. So I think we're more appreciative of culture now, post-COVID, than we were before. But of course, the pandemic was a terrible, a terrible crisis for the whole world. And it's the negatives are far greater than the positives. So going back to the Art Basel report, um, do you think uh, the quite optimistic figures and the quite optimistic outlook was sort of a one-off reaction to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic after hearing what you said about how it affected 
uh, the arts and culture business in general, or do you feel like this is a more fundamental reset of values? This, it's, a, it's a longer term process. I mean, like I'm saying, I think the, the market for culture all around the world is growing, and that means the market for fine art is growing, and the appreciation of fine art is growing. So I'm sure that the art market will go on prospering. Uh, the question is whether prices continue to go up is a slightly different one, because as the art market becomes more sophisticated, as buyers become more sophisticated, it may be that the art market becomes more competitive. And at the moment, the prices that some artists command are crazy, quite honestly. And whether that will continue forever remains to be seen. But I've no doubt that the art market will go on being a very, very thriving and dynamic part of the cultural world for the foreseeable future. And in which countries do you think it will continue to be so? Is it going to be the same everywhere or do you think the differences will be uh, much higher? Well, the art market prospers where there's spare money because it is a luxury market. Uh, and one of the reasons why it's growing massively in Asia, in East Asia, Art Basel started its, uh, its events in Hong Kong a while ago. It's now one of the biggest parts of the Art Basel uh, calendar. And that's because there's a lot more money in Asia and a lot more people interested in art in Asia. As the economy evolves around the world, the art market changes. So I've no doubt that in Europe and North America, where there's always been a strong art market, that will continue. But it is becoming much more global. It's expanding across Asia. It's expanding perhaps into Latin America. And who knows what's going to be happening in Africa. There's a whole new art market of great contemporary painters beginning to open up in Africa. I think we haven't begun to see on the world market yet, but I'm sure that will come. And how much do you expect the digital options or the digital transformation we're going through to, to shift balances in this picture that you painted? For well, uh, you're asking me to speculate. I think it's very, very early to say this whole the, the growth of NFTs, the non-fungible tokens, is certainly changing the art market. I'd say the digital world is changing the whole culture market radically because the way we consume culture is changing so radically. So it is having an impact on the art market. I mean, the NFTs is a new way of the art market itself operating, but I think the impact of the digital world on culture is massive in the sense that virtually every kid in the world now has the means in their pocket of producing art, producing images, producing music, making little movies, making little songs and exchanging them. That's what's happening. That's what's changing our culture to a much more popular and democratic form. Uh, and I think that the, the long-term consequences of that are very radical indeed. Mm -hmm. And what do you think are the challenges facing the creative industries for, for the next decade? What are the biggest global challenges? I would say that uh, one of the issues affecting the creative industries is that it's very fragmented. A lot of businesses in the creative sector, we're talking about film, TV, games, fashion design, visual arts, entrepreneurs working on their own, artists working on their own. So they're small businesses and they're quite fragile. So the ecosystem of the creative industries is quite uncertain. The financial infrastructure is quite uncertain. The kind of skills that are made available and the kind of support that governments give to the creative sector is getting better, but it's still in a very fragile state. So I think while the creative sector is going to grow, and it's certainly growing here in Turkey, growing very fast indeed, fashion, games, music, all these areas, and film, all growing very, very rapidly, I'm sure that will continue, and we need to have the financial, education, tax structures that help to support that growth in the same way that in the past we've had financial and education and tax structures that support the manufacturing sector or the service sector. We need that similar support for the creative sector to grow. And the other factor, of course, is that this is an area in which many young people want to work. So kids want to work in this area, and that means they're going to grow it they're going to come up with new ideas and innovations, and we'll have to respond to that. And as for one last question, because we're running out of time, you are obviously from the UK and you're a cultural ambassador for the mayor of London. So are you expecting this um, kind of a growth in the creative industries in the UK as well after you know, Brexit and uh, the, all this you know, changing dynamics in the world? Well, yes, 
inshallah, as we might say, uh, the, in, in London, the creative sector is hugely important already. It's one job in six. Four out of five visitors who come to London say they come for the cultural life of the city. It earns $50 billion a year US for our economy. So it's a core part of the city's economy, and I'm absolutely sure it will continue to be so. Well, I hope so as well. Thanks so much, John Newbegin, for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Great pleasure. Thank you.